Welcome to part 18 in this UNet tutorial series. And in this video, I'm going to spend some time fixing some problems with my code. So now that Unity 5.1 is out and the documentation is out, I've been going through it and I've realized that there are some, uh, I guess, fundamental problems with some of my implementation. Uh, so for example, uh, the most uh, important one is in the main scene with uh, my uh, game manager, actually. So I have a game manager zombie spawner script. It's a network uh, component. It is a network script. And so because of that, it needs a network identity. Uh, but at the same time, I have this other script that's storing references to objects in the scene that are disabled. And this is actually a problem because when something has a network identity on it, uh, it will in fact be uh, disabled when the uh, client first starts. Uh, their game and then the server will tell them to spawn that object into the game if it is in fact active on the server so because of that so so reading through this uh, that's how i understood that um, that it says here basically that when um, uh, objects are etc 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 okay right here so when the scene is fully loaded uh, this this function is run to activate the network scene objects. Uh, so, okay. And not only that, it mentions there pretty specifically. Uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, okay. So basically, that's it. If you, if you have objects that are, that have that network identity component attached to it, then it will in fact be disabled when you, uh, load the scene for the first time as a network client. And what the problem with that is that this script then is inaccessible. It means that other scripts that I have in the game on the player, when they try to reference this script, they won't be able to. When could this problem arise? Well, it won't happen in um, in a local uh, host situation where you're testing on your own computer. It's most likely going to arise when you're actually connecting to a distant server and there's a lot of a lag connecting to that server, then such a problem could potentially arise where this game object is still disabled on the client and then the player game object has been spawned and somehow this still hasn't been the game object hasn't been activated in the scene and because of that then uh, the player won't be able to access uh, this script. So this the fix is very simple. Uh, so all I'm going to do is to create a new uh, game object. And I'm going to make this uh, the spawn manager. I'm then just going to take this script and drop it onto the spawn manager. Back in the game manager, get rid of the network identity. Now this is fixed up, so the game manager is OK. Uh, next, for this one, uh, another thing is a spawn manager, it's a spawning. The server is in charge of spawning, right? So it only needs to be server only. So this game object isn't even going to exist on the clients. It's only going to exist on the server. And next thing is I'll just change the name of the script now. So I'm going to call it spawn manager. Okay, and coming back here. And then I'll just reopen that. Okay, so that's sorted that out. Now, there is actually another problem with this code here. At the very bottom, uh, where I have here networks server dot spawn go, I should in fact have this line come as the last item in the list because that's how it is in the examples provided uh, by Unity. Uh, that's how they do it. So they actually um, will set uh, the component parameters on the instantiated game object on the server, and then they will say network server dot spawn. So I too should do uh, in the same way. I should write my code in the same way. Okay, so that sorts that out. So uh, there isn't a problem now with uh, the spawn manager with the zombie spawner, that's fixed up which is good. And now I have some other things that I need to fix up. So for example, in my player network setup script, which is my first script, I shouldn't actually rely on uh, is local player uh, because there is an explanation about player objects. And um, 
uh, well, actually, no, in the object spawning, it's described. And on start local player is actually what I should use for uh, setting up the local player game object. And this is local player flag gets set at the very end. So it's in fact possible that, you know, with a very distant server, maybe what can happen is that um, when the client game object, when the player's game object is instantiated, uh, it's, I guess, spawned as well. Uh, yes, it would be have been spawned. Then it's possible that when the start function runs, runs, uh, this flag has not yet been set to true. And as a result, none of this code will get run. So in that case, what I should do is I should use the uh, new function for doing that sort of stuff, which is public uh, void override, or rather public override uh, void on um, on start local player on start local player and then I should take this uh, code and put it inside there and get rid of this start function it's not necessary anymore and now I'll have fixed any possible bug in the future where this code would not get run so now that's uh, fixed up okay so that's this one. Now I do have a couple of my other player scripts that are like that. So I should go through each one. So for example, I'm using the start function again in the player death script. So once again, uh, items that are for the local player that are only controlled by the local player, I should use on start local player. But then there are other items that are used uh, by the client in general, not just the local player. For example, subscribing to this event disable player is run on all the remote instances as well. Uh, so really, I, preferably, I shouldn't use uh, the start function for that. I should use, say, a public uh, override a pre-start client. So this is an internal method called an client objects to resolve game object references, exactly what I'm looking to do. And uh, this is a good place for me to, for example, assign the references to the health script and then subscribing to that event as well. Uh, and then I can use on local player, so public override uh, on start local player for the crosshair image. just because that only needs to be activated and deactivated on the local player it doesn't make sense uh, the, the, uh, the client really the uh, remote clients don't need a reference to it it doesn't matter as you can see the code only runs uh, if is local player then only then uh, is the crosshair image uh, affected in any way all right so that's the player death script so now I should proceed with the health script Uh, here it looks like I only need to uh, use on start local player uh, because the set health text is only done if uh, this is in fact the local player. It's not done in remote clients. So here I can just replace the contents of the start function with uh, public override on start local player. And then I'll just cut this code and put it inside there. And no need for the start function anymore. Done. All right, so that's uh, the health script done. Uh, next, I should uh, check the ID script. And uh, this script looks all right. I'm already using on start local player, which is good. Uh, so this one's fine. I've already changed the network setup script, uh, player respawn. Yeah, I need to change this. Uh, so this one too, there's a bit of changing here. So public override a pre-start client. And here I'll, uh, I guess I'll get the reference to the health script and subscribing to the event. And I will also uh, use on start local player, so public override on start local player and cut this and put that in there and get rid of the start function and i the reason why i'm putting set respawn button there is once again because it's an only it only runs on a local player in fact if i tried to run this code in the pre-start client uh, definitely there'd be an error because the is local flag wouldn't have been set by then the pre-start client runs even before 
uh, it would happen on like, let's say this was the local player and the client has been spawned, then this function is going to be run first. And then later, this one is going to get activated uh, just as it's described here uh, by this message, uh, the message type dot owner is sent uh, to the client uh, to tell it that it is, I guess, the local player or something like that. All right. Um, so that's it for here. Oh, there's actually something else. I'm thinking as well that I shouldn't use uh, on disable uh, here for unsubscribing from the event. I actually think I should use uh, on network destroy. So on network destroy, because uh, that will actually unsubscribe when uh, the actual uh, when the when the game object is destroyed, then it will actually be unsubscribed. And that would happen across the network as well. Uh, so I do have that. So this is what it's called on network destroy. And that looks like the appropriate place to actually run this bit of code. And I'll go back and do that on the uh, death script as well. All right, uh, next I'll check other scripts. Do I have anything for shooting? Nah, nothing here, this is fine. Okay, uh, sync position, sync rotation. All right, so that's it. Uh, there's another thing actually for the player position. And the truth is, I actually don't need to use uh, my sync position script because I've tried it out with uh, syncing the character controller uh, with the network transform, and it actually works very well. So I'm going to add that back in. So going to network and network transform, turn off rotation. Uh, I'll have to change that later because that will only rotate the um, main capsule in the Y. It has no effect on the camera head component of the player tilting up and down. So uh, later I can change that. That's very simple. Uh, but what I really should be syncing is the character controller. And now it will work very well, actually. And uh, if I say set it to 11, uh, the network send rate, it'll be very smooth, actually. I was trying it out, and it actually does work quite well. Uh, so that means I can disable my player sync position, and I need to make a new script because um, quite lazily what I had done was I um, put my latency uh, bit of code inside of the player sync position script. So I'm going to make a new script now for that. So I'll make a new C sharp script and I'll call it player uh, latency. And I'll just open that up, turn it into a networking script. So using uh, Unity engine networking and as usual derive from network behavior. All right. And I can just go to my sync position script and uh, pretty lazily uh, just grab uh, the, I guess, the code from there that I need rather than having to type it all over again. And I also need um, to set this uh, network client as well. And uh, I will actually do that in the, I won't use the start function for that. Oh, I also need using. A unity engine dot UI. All right. And I'll use once again public override on start local player and put that bit of code in there. Okay. Uh, and then next, um, yep, I'll find the latency text. All right. And then I'll go and get um, uh, that show latency uh, function. And I'll just put that in the update function as well. All right, and there it is, show latency. And then I'll just go and attach it to the to the player. So coming back to my player prefab, I will drop that in. Yep, I've disabled the sync position script, which is good. I'll apply that and delete the player. 
I'll double check that I've set my spawn manager properly. Yes, I have. And my game manager is all right. And I've just noticed something. I've got some warning messages. So let me have a look at that. So what is it telling me? All right. So I need to add in, I guess I need to add in a public, make it public override. So I haven't written this correctly. So I need to make this public override void on network destroy. And that's the correct way to write it. And I'll go back and do that for uh, the respawn script as well. And that should uh, remove those warning messages. All right. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, next, I'll just save the scene and go back to the menu and then just uh, build and run to test it out. All right. And any moment now, the zombies will be coming. Ah, there they are. Okay, so uh, that's looking all right, actually. And I am, in fact, using the uh, character, syncing the character controller now instead. And it, it actually does work very well. So I was a bit mistaken to uh, actually write my own script for that. That was actually a mistake. All I needed to do, in fact, was to just write a rotation script that only syncs the rotation of the um, actual uh, camera head component. So the tilting up and down of that, that would have been sufficient. I didn't actually need to go and write my own uh, script for uh, syncing the actual uh, player motion. But anyhow, I guess in that exercise, I learned a bit more about how the system itself works. But okay, uh, so that was the, uh, f I guess, first round of bugs that are fixed up. I guess when my understanding of the system increases, maybe I'll find some more problems with my code. And in that case, then of course, I'll fix that. But I think that's enough for this video. I think in the next video, I'm going to try out the matchmaking feature, uh, you know, for being able to connect to a list, you know, having a public server and then being able to connect to that public server by selecting it from a list. All right, but uh, that's it for this video. And uh, thank you for watching.